Hello everyone and welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how easy it is to deploy a MERN app for free using Versal. So we are going to create a React app, then we are going to add Express API, and then we are going to deploy it to Versal. So we are going to start with a React app. Here, as you can see, I have only an empty directory. And in this directory, I will open my terminal. And in the same directory, I will create a new React app. So let's do yarn create react app and dot. All right, so now it's installed. We have a bunch of React files here and we can start our React app with react, uh, yarn start. And now I can see my app. I can hide this terminal. And now let's quickly go to source and app.js. And now let's create a uh, super easy app that will communicate with a backend. So I will get rid of everything here. And I think I will just put a button here that will say fetch info from API. And uh, let's maybe put another div here with a result colon. And here we will print some result. And uh, what this button will do, uh, it will fetch some information from API. So let's do this, the function, and let's call this one uh, fetch info. Yes. And uh, this button will have on click fetch info, right? Uh, so now to print the result from API, we need to have a state. So let's add it here. So const, let's say result set result equals use state and default will be empty string and we will show this result here result yes so run like this and we have a fetch info from api and the result is empty string for now right but inside this function fetch info uh, we want to call our api and uh, put the result into result but we don't have an api backend yet so let's uh, create it so in the same directory as you can see we have this whole React application here in uh, my di directory MERN deploy. And in the same directory, I'll create a, a directory called API. And in this API, we'll have an Express app, our API app. And alongside, we'll have our React app. So now, um, inside our API directory, let's just create index.js. And in here, we'll just put a regular Express app. So I'll open my terminal, I will open new tab, and uh, let's add yarn add express, right? Now uh, express is installed. Uh, now let's uh, define our API endpoint. So let's do const express equals require express. Yes, and now we need to define our app equals express. Now we can do that our app on get request on let's say slash api slash uh, test it will take request and response arrow function like this and let's say it will just respond with json that will say hello world and then let's maybe add a, a date time so let's do date now timestamp will be good enough right and now in the new tab in my terminal i will start this up with uh, node one so let's go first to the API, see the API to the API directory. And now you can do node index.js, or if you want to auto refresh, when you change the file, you can use nodemon. I will use nodemon, nodemon index.js. And uh, now nothing is happening because we need to add that our app should listen on port, let's say uh, it will listen on port 4000, yes? And now let's see, I'll open new tab, localhost, let's do 4000, and let's do API test, and we get hello world and a timestamp. Right, now um, a good thing to do would be to put this port number into a config file. So inside our API directory, alongside our index.js, let's put that env file, that env. And let's maybe call this variable API port equals 4000, yes. And uh, now let's use our env variable for our API. So uh, first we need to I will open new tab here and I'll add yarn add.env so we can read those environment variables. And uh, now let's do const 
env equals require dot env and now we just need to dot env config yes and now we should be able to do just console log and let's see process dot env dot api port now let's see we get our api port here 4000 because we are console logging this so now we can use this instead of just 4000 right and um, and this should still work yes it does the timestamp changes so now we can call from our react app from localhost 3000 to localhost 4000 slash api slash test so let's do this so we can print this result somewhere here so let's go to source app.js and we have fetch info and here what should we do we want to call this endpoint localhost 4000 slash api slash test but again it would be nice to have this uh, path to our api somewhere in the configuration because on the server it can be different let's say that uh, yeah it will not be 4000 and 3000 or but it will be the same domain or something like this so uh, next i will close this api for now and source of our react app and alongside all those files so inside our mern deploy directory i will create a dot env file here so we have dot env file next to our react app here and we have another one for our api here inside api directory but this dot env file will be for our react app so to have a variable environment variable visible inside react app we need to start the name with react app react sorry underscore app and let's say it will be api url and uh, if you start if you make them visible for react app you should remember that they shouldn't include any secrets or any passwords or something like this so only uh public data so uh api url is will be localhost 4000 so let's put it here and let's add also slash api right now i will restart my react app let's do Control c and let's do yarn start again right now let's go back to our source app.js and uh, here maybe when we are clicking the button let's just do console log and let's see process dot env dot react app api url if everything looks uh, okay and this console log will be shown here inside our browser so i will make it bigger and now let's click the button and we see this uh, configuration here right so now using this we can define url to this endpoint so this is only includes only slash api so let's do const url equals let's use backticks i will cut here let's put this like this and let's also add slash test so this is uh, http localhost 4000 slash api and we just add slash test right and now we just want to and uh, get the json from this url so let's do fetch fetch on this url and uh, let's add some params the params will be we need to add the headers to tell that this is actually json or maybe we don't need headers no we don't need headers i think we don't need any params should be good just like this let's just grab the response cost const response equals fetch and uh, this is async function so we need to do a wait here and now we need to add async here because we are using a wait then from the response we need to get the json so let's do json equals response dot json like this and this is also an um, async function so we need to do a wait here and then inside this json we have this uh, string here so we can put it inside our result so let's do just set result and let's do json like this right now let's see if i click this button again fetch info from api we get an error let's see um i will open network tab we get a course error and this is because we need to specify that our app from localhost 3000 should be able to communicate with our localhost 4000 and to do this we need to first open terminal and we need to add a package library called course so let's do yarn add course 
and now it's installed. Now inside our API, let's go to index.js. Let's grab the course that we just installed. Let's do const course equals require course like this. And now we just need to use our course headers with our app. So by, by default, you would need to print all those uh, course headers, the response, but it's super easy with express. You just do app use and we can just call course as a function with parentheses here. Now, if I save, let's try again. If I click fetch info from API and we get hello world with the timestamp. If I click again, the timestamp will change. I can make it bigger, right? So now we have our app working inside the, our development environment. And now it's time to prepare it for production or for deployment. So uh, first inside our index.js, inside our express app. As you can see, we are listening on port this defined uh, 4000, but uh, this can be empty on the, on the server. This can be not defined. So let's quickly add if process.env API port, then we are listening on this API port. So um, this should be only, app listen should be only used uh, on your local machine. And that's why we are putting only if API port is defined, right? But otherwise we should just return our app with all the endpoints. So, uh, so Vercel can grab all the endpoints and can create the Lambda functions and deploy them to AWS. So this is super easy. You just do module exports equals app and that's it. I'm behind my terminal. The last step uh, that is uh, probably the hardest, but it's super simple as well, is that we need to add a configuration file for Vercel. So inside our Mern deploy, I will add a new file and it will be Vercel.json. And uh, here inside, it will be an object of configuration and we just need to add re re rewrites and it's an array. And the only rewrite we need to add is from source of uh, slash API slash uh, anything. So it's the dot asterisk like this. This should be rewritten to destination slash API. Yes, and uh, this should work. So we have a uh, rewrites and everything that goes uh, with slash API slash anything here will go to slash API and slash API is just our express app. And inside our express app, we are exporting our app, right? So now let's try to deploy it. First, we need to put it on GitHub. So uh, I will open my GitHub profile uh, and we are going to create a new repository. Let's call this one Mern deploy. It will be public, yes, create repository. And now we have instruction how we can add existing files. I will open my terminal here and uh, let's see, I just do git init and uh, we just need to add this origin. Yes. And now let's see if I give, do git status, I will see all those files that can be added. Maybe we can add that idea to git ignore because it's from my ID. So I will quickly add git ignore. Yeah, it's already here. Let's add that idea. We don't need this. Now again, git status. Also that env files should be also excluded. So let's exclude that env and let's exclude also api slash dot env. Now if I do git status, everything uh, looks fine. So let's do git add dot. So everything git commit. Let's do initial commit. And let's just do git push origin master, right? Everything is push. Let's see if I refresh my GitHub. Yes, I see all the files, right? And let's see inside API, we don't have the .env file because we put this inside git ignore, right? I'll make this smaller. And now let's go to Vercel. And now I will add a new project. So let's add new project and let's do Mern deploy import. And uh, before we deploy, let's add the environment variables. 
and uh, this dot env inside api we don't need this because it's only for our local development machines and we only need one uh, one variable that is here react api url so let's add it S and the url for our api will be just slash api because we defined it this way inside our versatile json and it will be in the same domain so we don't need to write localhost 4000 or something else and different port we can just do slash api and let's add this one and uh, i think this should work so now let's hit deploy this will take a minute or two All right now it's uh, deployed let's go to the dashboard of our project let's click visit and uh, i'll make it bigger let's see if it works yes it does if i click again this thing changes our timestamp changes so everything works i can open network tab and as you can see if i click this button it calls the same uh, url with slash api slash test and this test is actually our endpoint here inside our api which is express app so here you can do all the database connections and anything you want or file management actions yeah anything anything that you would like to do on the backend side so because uh, versal is uh, using lambda functions you can't not you cannot use uh, anything that runs uh, longer than 30 seconds so no sac sockets no uh, no stuff like this every endpoint should return a result should respond with json or something else within 30 seconds but uh, most of the apps will do this so that's not the problem and everything is automatic automated so when you push to github all your changes it will deploy automatically for you here inside deployments you will see something else so if i do he hello world 2 i will save this now inside my terminal i can do git status i can see that it's modified let's uh, add it let's do initial commit to and first let's do a git add and now let's do initial commit git commit initial commit to and now let's push it to origin master now it's pushed and if i refresh here you can see that uh, we pushed initial commit to and it's deploying it building and deploying so within one minute we'll have a hello world 2 because we changed it here when we click here on this button so uh, now as you can see it looks like it's already published so let's hit this button and we get hello world 2 and then the timestamp so this is how you can easily publish your Marin app super easy and on top of it it's scalable so all those all those endpoints will be lambda functions so versal will convert those to a single functions javascript functions that will be put to aws lambdas so uh, so that is always a good solution for growing apps or if you don't know how how much traffic how much traffic you will have but uh, that's all for today i hope you enjoyed the video if you did please click the like button and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this one have a nice day and uh, see you in the next video